Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today we are gonna smoke a Fuente Anejo Shark. Let's dive into it. The Arturo Fuente Hemingway series, Nejo Shark, number 77. Box pressed Figurado. So this is heralded by some as one of the best cigars that Fuente has ever produced. Uh, for me, it's right up there as far as some of my favorite Fuente series cigars and lines that Fuente has produced. I stumbled upon this cigar during my early smoking experiences and this particular line, the Hemingway line, is very near and dear to me. Most of you don't know this, but the very first episode that I ever did for Master Your Ash, which has never aired, um, was a Fuente Hemingway series short story. And I chose that smoke because that was the first smoke that really captivated me into the world of cigars. It wasn't the first cigar that I ever smoked. The first cigar that I ever smoked was a Romeo y Julieta in tubo. And that cigar made me curious, made me go to my local brick and mortar, and the first cigar that the brick and mortar gave me and the tobacconist that owned the store was a Fuente short story, Hemingway. And I think that the Fuente short story Hemingway at $5 a stick is fantastic expression, obviously, of the great Hemingway line, but also just a great cigar to start off your journey with. That cigar and that episode have never seen this particular channel because of the fact that I had a different direction that I wanted the, the actual episode to go in and it didn't. So I just, I haven't shot that cigar. This is gonna be the first Fuente Hemingway series that makes it onto the channel. And it's probably the most profound. This cigar is going on 20 years old now. I purchased this stick back in 2004 and then again in 2007. So this is somewhere between the 2004 release Anejo Shark and the 2007 release Anejo Shark. They come 25 to a, to a box. Uh, typically, the MSRP on them is supposed to be about 10 to $12 a stick, somewhere in the 13 range at the most. But on the secondary market, these things can go as high as four, five, six hundred $600 a box. So secondary market's a little bit more expensive. And this was the first Fuente cigar to really kind of captivate me besides the Casa Fuente line that we have at Casa Fuente here in Vegas and the Opus X. Obviously with the Opus X line, you're dealing with a Dominican Puro. You're dealing with uh, wrapper, binder, and filler coming from the Dominican Republic. A lot more sun-grown aspect to it. With the Anejo Shark and all of the Anejo line, you're dealing with a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper and then a Dominican binder and Dominican filler. So for me, this was kind of as I was getting into a Maduro phase, as I was getting into a little bit of a darker wrapper kind of phase and a Connecticut Broadleaf phase tremendously. I was getting exposed to a lot of tatuajes of the world and different things like that. And this probably helped me find brands like Tatuaje because by smoking this and enjoying it so much and having a greater appreciation for Connecticut Broadleaf style wrapper, it allowed me to fully get what Pete Johnson and Tatuaje and some of the other brands that really like hammered home Connecticut Broadleaf wrappers were trying to do. If you've never smoked an Anejo Shark before, one thing that I will say is that as you initially start off and taper down, sometimes the, the actual draws can be a little tight. And there's something to the Anejo Sharks with the way that they're rolled and kind of as you move down in ring gauge and you go from a box pressed format where it's squared off on the sides to a rounded cap and a rounded top. And you can kind of notice it a little bit better when the band's off, but it's one of the very, very few cigars that has a Parejo style rounded cap to it, but the foot is completely box pressed. So what that does is it causes the tobacco right at the band to kind of almost ball up into a fist. And it's very difficult sometimes, especially with the older Anejo Sharks, to get a really good draw on it. 
like right now my smoke volume is very, very low. So having a perfect draw or a poker um, to kind of open that up is definitely preferable. Or what you can do if you're me and you don't have one at the current moment is you can just kind of massage around that band and you just have to be kind of careful not to crack the wrapper, especially if it's a little drier. But if you massage right around that, you can kind of open it up. And get a little bit more smoke volume and texture. Anyway, moving on from the Anejo Shark, we're gonna pair that today with a barley wine. And this is coming local from Nevada. This is Craft House Brewery, which is a really nice brewery out in Henderson. And they are local Las Vegas, Henderson, Nevada brewery. This is also aged with their barley wine in Frey Ranch, Nevada bourbon barrels. Go figure. And this was a November release barley wine that was available at, well, so I pull that off. This was available at Corey's, which is a local wine, beer, and spirit store that we have here in Las Vegas. And they used the Corey's barrels of Frey Ranch to actually make the barley wine, which is really cool. I don't think that I got enough. Yeah, I did. Got enough of that wax off to get to that bottle. Get to that bottle cap. So they took Craft House Barley Wine and Frey Ranch barrels that were previously used as a barrel pick for quarries, combined the two, and for about $20, you got yourself a commemorative bottle of barley wine. So let's talk about barley wine. What is barley wine? Well, barley wine is beer. We'll start there. Barley wine is beer. It is a beer that was marketed as a wine. So the first beer, that we know of that was technically marketed as a barley wine is actually Bass. That wonderful ale that you make your black and tans with. Woo! And 14% alcohol by volume on this. It tastes almost like a wine more than it does a beer. Hence the marketing. But typically, usually most barley wines stay between about 12 to 14% alcohol by volume. And the reason why I wanted to do this pairing is because with this particular cigar in, let's see, I've owned, I've purchased four boxes of Anejo Sharks in the 15 plus years that I've been smoking cigars. And I've smoked through almost all of them. This is obviously one that's been around for a while from one of those original boxes. With this cigar, there's a ton of raisin, there's a ton of chocolate, especially once you go from the first third to the second third. And one of my favorite pairings that I used to go out and get every single year was, I would go out and I would get Sam Adams Chocolate Bock, which was a limited winter release that they would only do during the winter and I would sit outside and I would drink a Sam Adams chocolate bock and I would pair that with an Anejo Shark. And that was like my favorite thing because I loved the chocolate bock and I loved that it came in a big kind of, you know, 22 ounce bomber. Every single year it had the commemorative bottle with the top on it and everything. And I would have the chocolate bock and I would have my Anejo Shark and that was like my, kind of my, my winter thing. So with this, with the barley wine, um, it obviously has a ton of like super expressive kind of roasted chestnut, a little bit of influence of whiskey from the whiskey barrel. But there's no mistaking the roasted kind of coffee and chocolate notes on the Bach. And it pairs so well with this cigar. Obviously the Hemingway Anejo line comes in a multitude of formats. The Shark was released in 2001, which was two years after the 1999 original release of the Hemingway Anejo line. And they're all numbered. So there's the Anejo Shark, there's the 60, there's the 55s, there's the 48s, there's all different numbered lines. 
and they typically number them by ring gauge. So 77 stands for kind of the, the size roughly of the very, very end point of the ring gauge. And it also is a code number for it. And then the shark, because of the fact that it kind of looks like almost a, a shark body where you have that really, really big mouth. And then at the very end, the tail is, is kind of like thinning down on the shark body. So that's where kind of the, the reference point to it. But any of the Hemingway lines, it doesn't even need to be a Hemingway Anejo line and something like a, a barley wine like this that's been extra aged in a, in a cask of some kind. And I know that Craft House and Corey's have done, um, they've done like uh, Buffalo Trace barrels, they've done uh, other bourbon casks that are out there. So if you have a local brewery that's making barley wine, chances are they might be working with a local distillery as well to kind of bring the two together. But yeah, the dark molasses kind of flavors off the cigar. And the molasses notes off of this are just, it's a phenomenal pairing. I urge you all, obviously with the Anejo Sharks, they only come out maybe once or twice a year, so they're a little bit harder to, to grab. But there's Opus X Sharks now, there's all different sizes and, and lines that uh, Fuente has started to produce that are sharks. I would say that for those of you out there wondering what a almost 20 year old uh, Anejo shark smokes like, it's, um, it's very smooth. The biggest change as I've smoked these over the years that I've had them, is definitely the pepper on the retrohale is much more mild and manageable. What I will say though, is that that, that tight kind of bunching where you go from a box press to a, a regular style Parejo, that point right there, you need a perfect draw or you need to be able to kind of work on that over your smoking experience because that thing is tough. And it does over time get a little bit tighter. So that's my only knock on it, but other than that, the cigar is phenomenal. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below if you found value in this episode. Leave me a comment. Let me know what size of the Hemingway Anejo series you like the best. Is it the Shark? Is it maybe something like the Lancero, the Phantom Lancero that nobody can ever find? Um, also, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram, at Master Your Ash. Let me know what you think and I will see you in the next cigar and barley wine review.